My name's Will, and this is my lecture vlog, What Would You Like to Learn Today? Um, so, today I tried something new, and I, uh, I asked a whole bunch of people to ask me some questions, and boy did I get some. I decided that since a lot of them were about nutrition, we would have kind of a nutrition theme, if you will. Um, nutrition is very important. You should, always, you should always have as much nutrition as you're capable of. Um, it's important because if you're not having proper nutrition, your body will not be able to operate correctly. Um, really, your body needs to be functioning at top capacity so that you can be a high performer. Now, um, the question I decided to focus on uh, deals with Gatorade. Um, somebody asked what, what the deal was with red Gatorade. Well, the red in the Gatorade is really just like a couple extra food colorings and um, a little flavor packet. It's not a big deal, but it is interesting to talk about the original recipe for Gatorade. It was developed in 1967 to help the, uh, the Florida Gators win the uh, Orange Bowl against Georgia Tech. Um, basically, the idea was that they wanted to create the ideal sports drink, and it, everybody pretty much admitted that it really gave them a tremendous edge and it became the industry standard afterwards. Um, what's basically in it, you can see right here, um, what they're trying to do is replace all the stuff that gets used up really quick when you're an athlete, okay? Um, and they do it in a couple of uh, very clever ways, all right? First of all, water. Water's pretty obvious, all right? You're supposed to drink eight glasses of it a day, but if you're an athlete, that means you're sweating like a motherfucker. So you need to make sure to hydrate. That's very crucial, all right? Uh, sugar, um, all kinds. There are three different kinds. There's glucose, fructose, and sucrose was in the original mix. That's just to you know, replenish the original sugars. Get your blood sugar back up to where it needs to be. Make sure that you have plenty of raw material to do ATP resynthesis. Speaking of which, citric acid, it's kind of a pipeline, right, in your body. It takes in sugars and starches, it converts those into different types of acids, it has a breakdown process. Then it gets to citric acid in the Krebs cycle. Citric acid is kind of like one step in, um, past the initial uh, processing of glucose. Um, so this is kind of like getting a little jump start on the whole process and making sure that the whole pipeline is operating at peak capacity. You want everything to start at once. So this starts uh, the, the original sugar processing and this starts the Krebs cycle working, okay? Both simultaneously. Originally you'd have to wait for these to be broken down before the Krebs cycle would start up. Um, by putting both in at the same time, you get more ATP production, which is of course what you're trying to accomplish. Mm. Uh, what else we got? Salt, sodium, and chloride. Those are pretty obvious. Uh, you want to make sure that your electrolyte balance isn't going anywhere. Um, make sure that all your nerves are where they're supposed to be. That the sodium also helps with the sweating. Um, you get the idea. Okay. Um, sodium citrate. Well, uh, sodium citrate is a little uh, random. Huh. It's um, it has a couple uses. First of all, it makes the urine less acidic, which I guess is helpful. I don't know why it's necessarily relevant to a uh, football team, but there you are. Um, and it also has a slight effect on flavor. It makes stuff taste kind of like lime lemony, okay, which is great. Um, oh, I forgot to put fish oil up here. Fish oil is a, has a bunch of precursors to eicosanoids, which are anti-inflammatories. Um, so it basically keeps you from aching during a long game. Um, what else we got here? Monopotassium phosphate. This is pretty clever, okay? So one of the, when, you're, when ATP is uh, dephosphatized, when it, when it is expends its stored energy and releases it, that's adenosine triphosphate. It's basically, so ATP, which you should really know about, and if you don't, you need to get cracking, okay? ATP, it's basically an adenosine molecule, which is a big, it's, a, it's an amino acid, you know? Um, and uh, that's what you make proteins out of, but this is just taken off to be one other thing. It's basically got these three phosphates attached to it, and those are really unstable, and they break off real easy. Um, and when they do, they break off with a lot of force and energy, and that's what, this is what's used to power all of your cellular machinery. Everything that your body does, ultimately, it does through the expenditure of energy from this. What the sugars and the citric acid are doing is replenishing the supply of this, right? So what happens is this, that bond breaks, that breaks apart, now it's adenosine diphosphate, that can break apart also, and then you've got adenosine monophosphate, which can't break apart anymore, okay? Then you need to rephosphate it, 
and you do that through the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, okay? Then it can go out and do more things, like make your muscles run, okay? What modern phos uh, potassium phosphate is basically doing, that's, that's an ion with potassium and one of these phosphates, okay? So make sure that you, you always have plenty of these guys around to stick right back on where they're necessary, okay? And then the, the potassium is also there. It's good for, uh, uh, it helps nervous conduction. It's also important, one of the electrolytes that you have to have, okay? And then lastly, we have cyclamate. Now, cyclamate, I want to talk about a little bit about cyclamate. Uh, cyclamate is a sweetener. It's one of those artificial sweeteners like NutraSweet or, um, or uh, super, you know, of the, the, the ones that don't, you get like sweet and low that you get in the, in the coffee packets along with the sugar for the people who are like diabetic or whatever. Um, let's talk a little bit about cyclamate. This is kind of a chemistry lecture, but you love it. So what cyclamate pretty much is, okay, there's the, uh, you got a six ring carbon chain right there. Nitrogen, hydrogen, and then a big mess of sulfur going to an ionic bond over here. Okay, and that's not a bond, that's a, okay. This is cyclamate, okay. Now cyclamate, it's pretty sweet. It's about 30 to 50 times sweeter than sugar. Uh, which actually makes it uh, comparatively weak compared to some of the other stuff that they come up with since then, which is apparently far more sweet than sugar could ever hope to be or encompass. Um, let's see. So it's basically it's it's a sweetener, and um, well, there's some debate as to whether or not it's actually bad for you because what it causes is testicular atrophy, um, and it basically halts sperm production, which actually greatly decreases your likelihood of getting uh, various other types of diseases. Uh, so it makes you live longer, but at what price, at what price? Now the problem is that uh, this is fine, it doesn't really kill you, it's not gonna, it's no big deal, okay, just, if you're a chick, obviously, it's nothing, right? Um, and the problem is that sometimes that it gets, uh, your intestinal flora get hold of it, and they go ahead, they break that bond, they take that sulfate group and that whole mess of the ionic bond, take it off somewhere else, and replace it with a hydrogen. At this point, this is no longer cyclamate. This is now cyclohexyl amide. Amine. Okay, cyclohexyl amine. And uh, this is just straight out toxic. Um, and this is what really does the damage and is carcinogenic and, and does all kinds of dangerous stuff. So this was banned by the FDA in the 70s and they had to reformulate Gatorade. All right, lightning round time. Lightning round. Okay, cupcakes versus muffins. Uh, they're basically, they're the same size and shape, but uh, cupcakes are made out of cakes and muffins are made out of bread. Muffins also spread out into the muffin top. Um, <clears throat> perils of MSG. Well, monosodium glutamate, uh, <clears throat> you've got two parts. You've got sodium and you've got glutamate. The sodium in and of itself isn't obviously harmful. Glutamate, unfortunately, is a neurotransmitter, and that can cause overexcitation in certain portions of the brain, creating something that's very similar to the anxiety attacks that I talked about in the last episode, which you should go check out. Okay, uh, it makes you all twitchy and uh, palpitations, nausea, like headaches, that kind of stuff. Um, so it is called Chinese restaurant syndrome. So if it's happening to you, um, you should probably stop doing it, unless you enjoy the sensation, in which case more power to you. Um, Tupperware. Tupperware was invented by a guy named Earl Silas Tupper, um, who uh, revolutionized the whole marketing strategy of suburban America, with Tupperware parties, et cetera, et cetera. He made a lot of money off of it. Eventually he sold the company for $16 million and promptly divorced his wife, renounced his United States citizenship, and bought an island in Central America. More power to him. Lastly, corn nuts. Corn nuts are not actually nuts. Corn nuts, um, so they're a, a certain hybrid variety of corn that grows one inch long uh, kernels, and they, uh, you soak them for three days in water and then you deep fry them in oil. Um, and then you eat them with beer because you have to be very drunk to appreciate them. All right, this has been Nutrition Monday. Please have nutrition today. Nutrition is important. And so is asking me more questions.